Hey, this is Stu Mashwitz, and I'm going to show you the new Kingpin Tracker from the Red Giant VFX Suite. So I've got a shot here of this sign on the side of a building, and what I want to do is replace that sign. And so I've got a little piece of artwork here. I'll just go to that frame there and bring in my artwork. So I want to replace this sign with that. First thing I'm going to do is just kind of mask it properly. And I could go and apply good old corner pin. Corner pin is an essential kind of operation for any, any, any kind of VFX. But you know, obviously this isn't gonna help me with the tracking thing. I mean, I could probably track those four corners there, but I've got a different workflow in mind here. So let's switch to the all new Kingpin Tracker. Now this effect replaces the previous effect from Red Giant called Corner Pin. And Corner Pin has always been pretty awesome, but it is considerably more awesome now. So I can do the exact same kind of workflow I was thinking of doing here with Corner Pin. Just set my four corners. That's good for that frame, but what about the other frames? Well, the reason it gets to be called Kingpin Tracker is that it's got a tracker built in. So I'm going to select the background plate as the layer to track, and I'm gonna start tracking. And what you'll see is that Kingpin Tracker is starting to lay down keyframes for the corner pins. And it's actually tracking this HD plate so quickly that After Effects can't refresh the display to keep up. And so we've got a little preview over here in the effect that lets you see the tracker in progress. So that's about 175 frames that we just tracked there. And let's check it out and see if we like it. Yeah, that's looking pretty great. So let's go back to our marked frame where we started. And now we'll just track forward from there. At any point I can stop the track and kind of check it, make sure it's still looking good and then resume it. Now I'm intentionally not speeding up this part of the video because I want you to see the actual speed of this tracker. It's a true planar tracker and we think this tracker is as fast and as good as any planar tracker out there. And it has the workflow advantage of working right inside of After Effects. In fact, you saw that I took this smaller layer here. It's only a 500 pixel wide piece of artwork. I manipulated it, I dragged it around, I tried it out in different positions, and then I moved the corner pins way outside the layer boundaries. This is the layer little handles here. And yet it still knew where the full HD plate was and tracked it and is now rendering our layer beyond the boundaries. But as you may have noticed, you know, things aren't quite lining up here because our signs are slightly different shapes. And that's where you get into some more important features of Kingpin Tracker. So we have a section here called Transform Pins. And I can adjust scale. And you can see I can scale right past the edges of the original layer. I can shrink it down, I can expand it up, and I can turn off uniform scale and get separate scale for width and height. So I could actually scale this up to kind of match its original aspect ratio, but still fill and cover up the original sign. And in fact, then I can translate it left and right but now it's important to note, I'm translating this in the planar space, right? So let's translate it down. So now I've replaced this smaller sign with something much larger, and you can see how well it's tracking. And I wanna talk a little bit about the render quality here too. Let's zoom in on this a little bit. So there's two things that you wanna be worried about when tracking something like this, a piece of artwork especially, that has some high frequency detail on it. One is aliasing, and the other is sharpness. You want the result to be sharp, but of course you don't want it to sizzle or have any kind of funky aliasing artifacts. So Kingpin Tracker actually has a really nice control called Smooth Sharp. And what this is doing is adjusting the sampling algorithm so that you can bias it towards being more smooth and maybe a little bit softer, or sharper and maybe a little bit more likely to more A. The default of 50% is a perfect kind of compromise between the two, but I love having this amount of control because if you've ever noticed, sometimes corner pinning can be kind of a sizzly affair with certain high detail things, and we really worked hard to make sure that that wouldn't be an issue with Kingpin. All right, so that's how to do some basic corner pinning and tracking, but not every shot is gonna have such a convenient one-to-one -one relationship between a rectangular thing to track and a rectangular thing to replace. So here's another shot footage of just a blank billboard off in the desert somewhere. And let's bring in the sign we want to replace. So what's cool about this sign is that, you know, this sign is going to kind of hang off the boundaries of this billboard that we're going to track it onto. And typically that would be kind of a challenging thing for a corner pin because if you, again, if you started with just the After Effects corner pin, I mean, I'll try it here with Kingpin, but you would, you'd be kind of fighting the system here as you're trying to kind of get you know, it requires a lot of trial and error to try to get the, all the edges to line up. 
I always just hated doing this. It drove me absolutely crazy. And then again, I haven't, this doesn't help me at all with the tracking. So we have a better way with Kingpin. Let's reset and get that back to the middle. So the way we're gonna do this is by using the from pins. So what you've seen us adjusting here are the two pins, the planar region that we are remapping the image to. But it's oftentimes also helpful to be able to specify where we're mapping from. So in this case, I'm gonna switch the display here to the from pins. And under render, I'm gonna show original. And that way nothing's gonna get distorted while I'm moving these. And I'm gonna just line up the from pins with kind of an area of this sign that I think is roughly kind of rectangular in the way that the billboard beneath it is. I don't need to be super exact about this because I know that later I can use those awesome transform controls, but this will at least give me a really good start. Okay, now I'm gonna show the two pins and I'll go back to showing the warp of both the pins. So right away you can see, I'm taking the area of the layer defined by the from pins and I'm mapping it to the two pins, but you can see this very special thing that's gonna to start to happen here, which is that as I start to move these pins, you can see that we are not cropping to the boundary defined by the two pins. And in fact, I'm just gonna turn off the opacity of this layer and just guide myself in here with tracking just the part of the sign that I know is fairly consistent from one frame to the next. I'm keeping these pins just inside the borders because I don't want any details from behind the sign to affect the track. And now I'll turn the layer opacity back up. That's cl certainly close enough. Uh, I could probably play around with transform a little bit here, but the main thing I want to do is get tracking. And once again, I'm going to pick my layer to track and I'll start tracking. And again, the place to look is over here in the effect, our little preview. And it seems like it's doing a very good job. All right, so we'll turn off the effect real quick and just make sure, yeah, that looks like it lined up pretty well. And now we'll track forward. All right, and let's pull a little Julia Child here and uh, pull the finished one out of the oven. So here's the finished shot. We've got the sign beautifully tracked in there with Kingpin using the from pins to define the area in the layer to map to the rectangle using the two pins to define the rectangle and the tracking. And my favorite thing about this shot is that we get to use Kingpin twice because we used it again for the shadow. So here's the shadow layer and here's Kingpin, which we use to track the ground. And then we're just using a little bit of a displacement map here to use the ground to displace the shadow vertically, which is a cool trick. I love the way this turned out. So you can see how the from pins make it possible to do things that you just couldn't do with the After Effects corner pin effect. But there's one more really awesome way to use the from pins that won't be obvious at first, but once you learn about it, you're gonna use it all the time for plate cleanup, for removing objects, but also for adding things to shots. So let's take a look at one more example here. So this is a really cool piece of footage of some like ruined bits of a castle wall here. What's happened here, and this is so often the case, is that you're working with someone else for something like a set extension or an augmentation of a shot. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of pick a hero frame, like I've picked a frame kind of near the end of the shot here. And you're getting basically a, a castle matte painting from an artist here. I mean, maybe you're doing it yourself if you're super talented, but if you're me, you're getting it from somebody else. So that's exactly what I've got here. I've got a castle that was designed to fit just perfectly on that one frame. So here's my shot. And if I go to the marked frame and bring in my castle, you can see that the castle sits right on top. Any other frame doesn't line up, so that's no good. So how am I gonna track that castle in to this kind of complicated camera move? Well, this is where to and from pins can work together to make this kind of a job really easy. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna split the castle into two separate layers so I can track each one separately. So we'll split it into the first half and just kind of look at the shot and figure out, I think what I'm trying to do here is just track it to this wall. So I'll apply King Pin Tracker to that clip. And again, I'm going to even just turn the effect off and I'm gonna set the two pins to where I think I can track. So it'll be helpful even to turn the opacity of the layer down. So I think I can track this wall with all this nice detail on it pretty well. I'm just gonna try to select a chunk of it that seems flat because this is a planar tracker. It'll achieve better results if the thing it's tracking is flat, like a plane. So I got a lot of nice detail there. Hopefully that's enough to get a good track. But now if I turn Kingpin back on, 
and turn my layer back on. Well, I've taken my whole giant layer and I've squinched it down. That's, there's my castle there. That's, that's not correct. This is where the two and from pins are gonna work together. So I'm gonna show both from and two pins here and twirl open my effect. And here are the two pins that I've adjusted and here are the from pins that are still at their defaults. And on each one of the two pins, I'm going to select and copy and then select the corresponding from pin and paste. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And what I've done by doing that, this is sort of like, you can think of the from pins as like the equivalent of adjusting the anchor point of a layer in After Effects. So if I show the from pins, you can see they're in purple here. You can pick what color you want them to overlay in, by the way, if you wanna pick a different color, you're more than welcome. And here are the two pins. So they line up one to one, which means that effectively our layer is right back where it started. In fact, if I turn off Kingpin, nothing happens. It's right there. Okay, now the magic happens because now when I adjust the two pins, well, the castle moves along with it and that's really cool. So if I picked a good spot to track, let's select our castle plate layer and hit track, see how we do. So again, the place to watch for the progress is over here in the effect controls. There's a nice long shot. And here you can see our two pin keyframes being laid in one at a time automatically as it tracks. And you can see this is going pretty fast here, but you know, I respect your time, so I'll skip ahead. And at the end, looks to me like that is a rock solid track. Did a great job of just sticking that castle wall right to the plate. That's amazing, love it. All right, so let's go back to our marked frame one and just track forward those last handful of frames. And that looks good. And now we'll do the same for the other part of the castle. So again, same exact workflow here. Bring in the artwork, jump to our hero frame. We'll solo this guy and give him a mask. Apply a kingpin. Temporarily turn down the opacity of the layer and set the two pins to the area we want to track. Just looking at the shot briefly. I think it's gonna be this wall here, which seems like it's sort of on a different plane than this one here. So I'm gonna try that one, see how it works. Now what's great about this is I don't even have to worry about this being like a plausibly kind of trackable, you know, billboard kind of an area. I can pick any kind of quad that I want because the way that the perspective distortion works, it's still gonna line up when I copy the two pins to the from pins. Let's do our little copy paste dance here, copy, Paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and copy, paste. And now if I turn opacity back up, just like before, the layer is lined up just perfectly the way it was painted. And again, we'll pick our layer to track, and I will hit go. That's about 300 frames there, tracked in under a minute, and that looks perfectly lined up. Just loving that. All right, let's jump back to that hero frame and we'll just track forward those last handful of frames and great. So now if I just turn off the background, you can see just my two layers tracked into place there. And I wanna make sure that they render accurately. So I'm actually gonna turn motion blur on for them. I can choose to uh, use the comp settings for motion blur, shutter angle and uh, phase, or I can uh, set my own here. And I don't need a whole lot of samples here. So I'm just gonna pick five. And my last two little details here, I'm gonna add a uh, foreground rock layer that I've already kind of rotoscoped out so that uh, my castle will get properly occluded and I'll throw Magic Bullet Mojo on top of the whole thing. And here's our finished shot. Pretty awesome castle map painting tracked in seamlessly with a little bit of planar depth because I tracked the two parts of the castle separately. I think it looks pretty great and it came together really quick without having to ever leave After Effects to do any of the tracking work. There's the before. And there's the after. Now there's one more shot I just can't help but want to show you to show off how the tracking the from pins and the two pins all work together to produce amazing results in Kingpin Tracker. So this is a shot from a short film that I shot a while back and I'm working on the visual effects for it. My job is supposed to be replacing the end of this half sword that was sticking into this police officer here. But this is the B camera angle and it wasn't the angle that the fight was choreographed for. And so the stunt performer here 
who moves through the frame is actually meant to exit the frame. We're not supposed to see him here. We loved this angle and wanted to use it, so I decided I would just remove the guy. He gets almost completely out of frame, and so what I did is I found one frame here where I was able to just paint a clean plate for him here, just paint a little clean patch of forest for where the guy was supposed to be. And I did that right in After Effects just using the clone brush. And then what I did is I've got Kingpin here and notice that the area here that I'm gonna track, I've got the sword replace uh, comp selected here as the comp that I'm gonna track. It has nothing to do with the region that I'm actually tracking in. This was shot with a crazy wide angle lens and I need to match that perspective. And so what I did, the reason I chose this rectangle here is that it's a more or less kind of planar area of the background that is gonna represent kind of the lens distortion of this area. What I've done is the same exact thing here. I've got the from pins and the two pins set to the exact same values here. And now I'm just gonna track first backwards. And you can see it stops tracking when it gets to the beginning of the layer and now I'll track forwards. And you can see in our preview here, I dialed that rectangle in just barely to miss his arm. The other thing you'll see when I turn this back up is that it tracked, you know, really close to off the edge of the frame with just this little bit of information here. It's tracking all of this whole big plane here. And you can see how consistent with the lens distortion it is and how nicely distorted it is. So if I just tried to track that flat artwork in, that wouldn't work. So here I'll solo this layer and you can see there's the fix tracked into place. And then the final uh, kind of tweak here is on the frames where the guy is leaving, I just have this layer called dude here where I just have a couple little furry frames of guy just linearly animating out. So I've got the guy now kind of just, I'm just helping him out of frame with just those, those couple frames. Okay, now, now he gets out of there just like he should. No one will ever know. So again here on these frames, Turn off the patch, there's the guy, turn it on, there's the cleaned up plate. And so that's kind of the whole story of Kingpin Tracker. Yeah, you're going to use it for sign replacement. Yeah, you're going to use it for all kinds of typical corner pinning cases. But you're also going to really enjoy the fact that it has built-in transforms, that it has excellent sampling methods built in, beautiful motion blur, lightning fast, super accurate tracking right on your timeline, extremely high quality results from Kingpin Tracker.